What would you say your most valuable resource is? People might say it's their home, it's their car, it's their relationships, it's their family, it's their money. All of those important, but not the most valuable. The most valuable resource we have as human beings is our health. And when we don't recognize it, the ripple effect is huge in every other area of our life. And we don't want to put ourselves in a position we, where we become dependent on other people, we become dependent on a dysfunctional healthcare system, we become dependent on pharmaceutical drugs. We want to take control and empower ourselves to be healthy. That by far is the most important thing. And we get easily sidetracked or lied to that the most important thing in life is accomplishing grandiose goals, becoming successful in life, owning a lot of material possessions, meeting the right person, getting married, having a family, having kids. Those all pale in comparison when you don't have health. And health is absolutely essential for to accomplish all those things that we want. But if we make that first and foremost and primary, you will see a huge transformation in your value system and a huge transformation in what you're able to accomplish, in your energy levels, in your mood, your overall well-being, mental health, physical health. The list goes on and on and on. And yet we so easily sacrifice short-term gratification at the expense of our health. My name is Steve. I have been a life coach for 12 and a half years. My prices are ridiculously affordable. If you're interested, my email's in the description. The consultation is absolutely free and everybody benefits from life coaching. Gentle accountability and support to accomplish your goals and to improve your health as well. Every little choice we make through time, through repetitive behavior, becomes an automatic habit. It's really important because to remember that because we think, oh, um, it's just staying on my phone and sacrificing a half hour, 45 minutes of, of sleep while I'm in bed. And so instead of going on sleep, there's some social media post I want to read or there's a show I want to watch. It's only half hour, 45 minutes. <clears throat> we don't recognize that. What is the long-term consequences of, yeah, that might not seem like a lot, just a half hour, 45 minutes, a little bit, you know, going to later. But what is a cumulative effect of our short-term pleasure-motivated choices? We run a sleep debt. We are tired when we wake up in the morning. We don't have motivation. We don't have drive. A lot of people think they're lazy and it's just not that they're lazy. They don't have energy. They don't have energy because they're not prioritizing health as their number one focus and value system and revolving everything around that. So a lot of people look, okay, I'd rather be a workaholic and sacrifice my health. I'd rather be productive and, and uh, busy and stressed and constantly doing things and overloading my to-do list, overloading my schedule at the expense of health and self-care. When I'm working with clients, one of the things I really encourage them to put on their schedule, on their to-do list or their habits is self-care. We are not designed to be able to work full board Focus, concentrated work for eight hours a day. It just doesn't happen. It might happen with a rare, you know, a few people, but even people that brag about, oh, I work, you know, 80 hours a week, 60 hours a week, which is insane. What kind of life balance, work-life balance is that? 
But you, you, the real test is how much of that time are you productive? During a day, how much time are you productive with concentrated, focused work? It's probably about three, four, maybe five hours. Everybody has their own metric in which they, they're just energy starts fading. It's like you can't exercise for three, four, five, six hours consecutively. You just, you know, through the day, like a like high intensity exercise. And when our brains, they can, they're a small fraction of our body weight and they consume about 20% of our energy levels. That's huge. And yet we don't look at ourselves like an athlete would look at themselves and say, health is my number one priority because it's going to affect every level of my gameplay. And that's what we want to think. Health is my number one priority because it's going to affect every level of everything I do throughout my day. It's going to affect what kind of husband or wife you are. It's going to affect what type of employee you are or business owner you are. It's going to affect how you engage and interact with people throughout the day. It's going to affect your stress levels. You're going to, it's going to affect your anxiety levels. When you're not taking care of your health, you're much more susceptible and prone to getting sick. But not only getting sick, just to not responding well when life throws you a curveball and things are stressful uh, or things are anxiety provoking. You're going to be a lot more reactive. When you take care of your health, you have like this deep sense of inner calm and you have this sense of like a candle, a slow burn. Hey, I can sustain this. Versus as you see most people, ah, 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 I got to do this, I got to do that. Da, 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 and they're, they're running around like a chicken with their head cut off, constantly in a state of stress without realizing they're compromising their health. While it might increase their short-term productivity, the long-term consequences of that, you know, like throughout the week, throughout the month, is a decrease, a big dip in their productivity and what they're able to accomplish and just overall how they feel. I know when I don't get good sleep, when I don't exercise, when I'm don't, not eating well, it makes, it makes a huge, huge difference. And I don't feel like myself. And when I have, I'm not as resilient and able to handle stressful or anxious situations, I'll get an anxiety hangover. It's like, oh my God, I just feel like, you know, just hung over, completely wiped out, exhausted, and depleted. And when you're going throughout the day, you ask yourself, is this like a battery? Is this adding to my charge or is this depleting my charge? And when you deplete your charge, as we do, you top off your phone battery, we need to top off. And I noticed that in my schedule, is when I allow times for naps. Sometimes I'll take two to three naps, short naps, 20, 15, 20, 25 minute naps. When I schedule that into my day, I'm a lot more productive and consistent and able to be productive for a longer period of time and be focused when I'm eating well, exercising. And that's really the primary focus of life. It's to take care of your health so you're vibrant, so you're happy, you're content, you're resilient, you're empowered. And so what am I talking about health? Well, when I'm coaching clients, and so many clients when they start off, most people think, oh, I don't need coaching. And everybody needs coaching. Everybody benefits from that type of support, that type of gentle accountability, that type of strategies. It's a big difference when you know you're going to meet with your coach on a weekly basis and you're going to give account to how was your bedtime? Let's discuss it. Did you, did you meet your bedtime? What challenges do you have? And we just come up with a game plan. So you're, it, it's, we take baby steps and we gradually improve your, your life's healthy habits. And it feels so good. So bedtime, that is the biggest one for me. Uh, and when I, I focus on clients is like, let's get your sleep dialed in. I'm amazed most or many people think they have good sleep. And then when we start tracking it, I understand some of the struggles that they have. And I'm in awe how neglectful 
we are towards sleep. Sleep is our, it's what rejuvenates us, what repairs and restores us, and yet it's so easily put on the back burner. Oh, I don't have time to go to bed early. Oh, I'll sleep when I die. And it's just insane type of thought process. Sleep is an absolute essential priority. And if it's not, it should be. And it's so easy to just neglect it. And especially with all our screens, you know, we're constantly on our screens and we don't realize that all the time, all the time we waste on our screens could be put in the bank for good sleep. And so just good, healthy uh, sleep habits, good sleep hygiene is, is really crucial and, and very beneficial. And then just the other, you know, the basic stuff, uh, the good, healthy diet and exercising, getting sunlight, making sure you have the vitamins and nutrients that you need. And it doesn't have to be overwhelming. When um, coaching clients, we start off very small and clients go, oh my gosh, this is actually not so hard. And over time, th these habits become automatic for you and it feels good and you go through life like a lion or like a lioness, just feeling energized and empowered. And then the self-care is really important. You know, just taking breaks throughout the day, taking walks, taking naps, just doing short meditation ses sessions, listening to, to some soothing mu music. It really helps to recharge breathing properly. Most of us don't breathe properly. We have very shallow breathing, breathing through our mouths. And even just making that adjustment can give you more energy. And stop looking at the way the world models how our life should be. The world is it models uh, controlled chaos to, uh, to a large degree of that frantic, stressful, anxious, lifestyle it's normalized you know just having always being busy always having your calendar full always trying to bite off more than you can chew and when you say hey i want to unplug from that system it just doesn't do it for me you'd be amazed how unnecessary all those things that society says is important you no longer have to chase you no longer have to stress about you no longer have to pay for you no longer have to work an inordinate amount of hours for you just live a very simple, healthy, um, basic lifestyle. And, and it feels really good. And you're self-dependent and independent, which makes it e even better. Yeah, th that's really the focus of our lives is how we live it reflects our value system. And for most people, health is not the highest thing on the value system. The other thing, now, now sure, there's things that are going to come up and that are just outside of our control. You know, people get diseases, you know, genetic predispositions towards things. All of those things are, um, is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about let's do what we are in control of to empower ourselves, to optimize our health and to have a healthy immune system and not not say, oh, I caught a, uh, I caught a cold from my child or I, I got this or I got that from someone else. We have all kinds of bacteria and viruses within our uh, bodies that when our immune system, when we keep it strong and healthy, it's resilient and it's able to fight off those types of uh, viruses and diseases and illnesses. And so when you inevitably, when I'm coaching clients and I hear that they're sick or even when I get sick, I look back and go, okay, you know, it's easy to blame it. Oh, you know, someone gave it to me. But then I go, no, it's, I weakened my immune system. I was stressed. I, I overworked myself. I didn't get good sleep or I went off eating healthy. So it's really important that you're, we keep our immune system strong by, again, optimizing health. And the last thing that I'll leave you with is, be aware of how flawed we are as human beings. And I talk about this in other videos and probably talk about it in upcoming videos, but you want to create a lifestyle that supports health. If we have easy access to junk food, 
if we are surround ourselves with people that don't take care of their health, that you know they're either overweight or they're sedentary, that's another thing. Not sitting for extended period of times, just getting up and walking. But lifestyle makes a huge difference. You know, if you have a lifestyle that supports health, like getting a dog or walking your neighbor's dog, and so you just have that as an automatic habit or doing a sport that you enjoy that's organized and structured where you go you know, two, three times a week or a martial arts class, like all of those things are gonna support health when you make it easy to eat healthy by preparing food ahead of time. Preparing like prepare three days, four days worth of food and all you have to do is just uh, put it on a plate and heat it up. It's gonna be a lot easier to make healthy choices. We tend to make unhealthy choices when we're tired and depleted, right? Go on screens. When do you usually go on screen? When you're stressed, anxious, tired, depleted, when your willpower has been drained. And so just creating that lifestyle so it supports the choices that you wanna make instead of relying solely on willpower. It makes a huge difference. And the other thing is human beings, we are flawed and we over, it's called the planning fallacy in psychology, we over plan on what we think we can do. And there's an, and tied in with that is optimism bias. We're overly optimistic at what we think we can accomplish in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year. And so just lowering the expectations and focusing being like a tortoise, being a turtle, have a turtle mindset. Slow, steady, and consistent. Let's stop rushing around. Let's stop overworking ourselves because it just depletes our health, shortens our life, and stresses us out and so okay I'm not going to overload my to-do list I'm not going to overload my calendar and I'm going to but I'm going to stay consistent what ends up happening is when we have a really over when we over plan our week or over plan our day we might be productive and be able to do that but then we, we crash we burn out you know if you te if you keep it that type of schedule for too long and then we're just unproductive and so we have like oh i'm really productive but then we don't realize we're going to crash and it's better just to keep it steady just keep our our workload and our schedule lighter but with the ability to stay with it and stick to it on a consistent basis because i think it's like two-thirds of the people don't even complete their to-do list in a given day we just over plan. We're just completely unrealistic. And that creates a lot of stress, pressure, and busyness. If you want affordable coaching, uh, again, my email's in the description. Please like if you want to see more of these types of videos and subscribe if you haven't and share the video. And I'd like to know what is your number one priority prior to watching this video? What was your number one priority in your life? And what will it be now in the comments? Comments are always appreciated they encourage me to make more videos because i uh, know people are getting value out of them and thank you for sticking around and uh, look forward to the next time we speak again bye, -bye.